join me in singing our national anthem. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, George French, TJ Chapman, University of Minnesota choir members, and other community members who are lending us your musical talents this morning. Welcome to the commencement of the University of Minnesota Crookston. We have three very exciting things which we are celebrating today. As you're probably aware, we are celebrating 30 years as a four-year degree institution. Woo! And of course, graduates, we are celebrating you. And lastly, for everybody who lives in Northwest Minnesota, I think officially by today, the last snowdrift will be melted. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, we have so much to celebrate today. It is my delight to introduce Dr. Rosemary Johnson, Associate Vice Chancellor and pending Regents approval on Friday, our Senior Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. She'll be reading our commitment to the Native Nations and acknowledging the land upon which we stand. Dr. Johnson. We acknowledge that we gather at the University of Minnesota Crookston on the traditional land and water of the Anishinaabe and Dakota people, past and present, and we honor with gratitude the land itself and the people who have served as caretakers of Mother Earth throughout the generations. We acknowledge the genocide and systems of oppression that have deprived indigenous people of their lands and we honor and respect the diverse and beautiful peoples still connected to this land. We recognize the many contributions Native nations have made as the spiritual and physical caretakers of this land. We acknowledge the histories and cultural traditions that make these ceded and treaty lands special and celebrate the talents and gifts of indigenous populations of our region. With this land acknowledgement, we affirm the inherent sovereignty of Native nations. We strive to hold our university accountable to indigenous peoples and pledge to support and advocate for their welfare. The University of Minnesota Crookston stands with the community members of Native nations and commits to building relationships with the American Indian communities through partnerships, academic pursuits, historical recognitions, and recruitment efforts to further our commitment to promoting diversity and to create an equitable and inclusive future for this region. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. If we have any military veterans, active or reserve service members, 
or members of the National Guard who are here in attendance with us today, would you please stand for a moment of recognition? Thank you for your service to our country. This is our campus's 56th University of Minnesota commencement ceremony, and also the 115th commencement ceremony on this campus, dating back to the Northwest School of Agriculture when we were a residential high school, That's, and we still count many of those alumni across the region, state, and our country. We honor our long legacy of education on this campus and we strive to do our best to serve the region, the country, and as a land-grant institution with the mission of teaching, research, and outreach. My name is Mary Holtz Claus, and I have the honor and pleasure of serving as Chancellor of the University of Minnesota Crookston. Graduates, you did it! A great day for you. It's also a great day for us, too. It's a great day for us because we are here to celebrate your accomplishments with you. Family members and friends, welcome to this wonderful, important celebration of this milestone. And lastly, I want to welcome those who are on the stage with me, whose full bios are listed in your program. Stage team, please stand when I say your name and please remain standing. Can we please hold our applause until all of the individuals have been introduced? From my left, our Dr. Danny Johannesson, Associate Professor of English and today's name reader. Alicia Aslison, Class of 2012 and President of the University of Minnesota Crookston Alumni Association. Madison Elijah, President of the Crookston Student Association and will soon be, uh, after the finals are graded, a junior in animal science and pre-vet. Dr. Tony Kern, Interim Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. Dr. Don Sargent, Chancellor and Faculty Emeritus on this campus. Don served as a faculty member and then Dean and then assumed the Chancellor role in 1985 and served until 2003. Dr. Charles Casey, Chancellor Emeritus of this campus. He also was a regent and served on this campus as a Chancellor from 2005 to 2013. Doug Ipsch, Vice President, excuse me, Vice Chair and member of the University of Minnesota Board of Regents. Please join me in thanking this great group. <laughs> Stage party, you can be seated. I'd also like to acknowledge some of our guests and friends on campus for being here today. Please stand as I say your name and let's please hold our applause for all of our guests. My spouse, Reg Claus, and past campus first ladies, Barbara Musling and Mary Beth Sargent. Please stand, all of you. Also, spouse of uh, Dr. Johnson, um, a, pr a uh, professor at um, Michigan State University, Bill Johnson. Members of our American Indian Advisory Board, I believe are here, Brent Gish. Our community advisory members, Judy Neppel, Dr. Kerry Torkelson, and Dan Svedarsky, our Crookston Mayor Dale Stainbrook, County Commissioner Gary Wilhite, and we also have some very special guests with us from Bac Ho Soi Gun College in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, President Huang, Professor Luan, and Mr. Park Sang Soon. To all of you, thank you so much for being here. You may be seated. Now may I have our faculty and instructor members please stand. Our faculty members play the central role in providing the academic education for the graduates. They are the scholars who set the standards of high quality education through their work in teaching and learning, research and creative scholarship, and outreach and public service. Here at the University of Minnesota Crookston, our faculty members go way beyond the usual roles in their roles as advisor, mentors, role models, 
counselors, and advocates, please join me in thanking our outstanding faculty. You may be seated. Now I'll ask members of our staff, wherever they may be, because they're all different places working, um, these individuals play a critical role in the education and support of our students in areas such as enrollment management, financial aid, registration, registrar, residential life, dining services, academic services, outreach and engagement, marketing, and in all other areas. Please join me in thanking this very dedicated group. Now graduates, I'd like to call your attention to these colored banners which are behind us. These banners represent our four academic departments in the traditional colors of their discipline. Graduates, you may not have known this, but your tassels match those banners. And you are now part of the academic tradition of this campus and your chosen field of study. We hope your colored tassels will help remind you of your ties to your dedicated faculty members. And behind us also are the flags of the country of our international students who are graduating today. Graduates, we have provided you with a challenging and supportive learning environment. You've embraced those challenges and taken advantage of the opportunities. Many of you have conducted and presented research and scholarly work and have already contributed to the knowledge of the world. You have represented the University of Minnesota Crookston well during your time here on campus. You have volunteered hundreds of hours in service to our community. You've represented the, ca the campus in dozens of athletic events across our five state conference. And you've competed very successfully in state, regional, and national academic competitions and developed leadership skills in campus organizations while doing all this, while you're completing your academic work. And you've done this very, very well. I wanna take a moment to acknowledge that several of your fellow graduates can't be with you here today because they're members of our baseball team. And they're out there again, taking that, brought, that proud Golden Eagle pride as they compete in a baseball competition today. We wish them the best of luck too. They and all of you here before us now have left your mark on the University of Minnesota Crookston. Graduates, now it's your opportunity to thank those who have helped you. As you well know, you don't reach this point on your own. Along the way, you probably received an encouraging word or maybe a helpful office hour, advice and guidance, financial assistance, a welcoming smile, and many other helping hands when you maybe went over a little bit of a rough patch. The support comes from many. It came from your friends, your family, the staff, the faculty, and fellow students. So I have one last request of you. Now I'm gonna say no, one last assignment for you. So in a few moments, please stand if you're able. And from where you stand, please look towards those who helped you. Perhaps it was a fellow student, or a faculty member, or a staff member, or a member of your family, or a loved one. Point to them with applause, a wave, and a shout out, and thank them for those helped you along the way. So I want you, in a moment, to stand up, and the count of three, I want to hear you thank those people who helped you on your journey. One, two, three, time to get up. <laughs> okay, count to three, find them, find them, one, two, three, thank you, thank you. Okay, you can do better than that. You know, there's always a second chance. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, well done. You may be seated. I would now like to ask Regent Doug Hipsch to the microphone to bring greetings. Uh, Chancellor Holtz-Klaus, I thank you for inviting me to participate in this commencement ceremony today. Good morning, graduates and families. 
faculty and staff, distinguished guests. I am honored to preside at this commencement ceremony today and bring greetings from all of my colleagues on the Board of Regents. University of Minnesota Crookston graduates, I extend congratulations. Through your talent, hard work, and determination, you have earned this day of recognition. As you embark on what lies ahead, your career or continued education, carry your University of Minnesota degree proudly. But know it comes with great responsibility and expectation to positively contribute to your communities, the state of Minnesota, the nation, and the world. To all the family and friends joining us, thank you for the countless ways you supported these students as they earned their academic degrees. Congratulations to all of you. As the Vice Chancellor, I'm proud to introduce our 2023 commencement speaker at the University of Minnesota Crookston. This is Chancellor Emeritus Don Sargent. Don served the University of Minnesota Crookston for 36 years in varying roles from faculty to department chair to vice chancellor to chancellor. One of our campus's claims to fame is that we were the first laptop university back in the early 1990s, and Don was one of the key driving forces behind that. Please give a warm welcome to Chancellor Emeritus Don Sargent. Well, thank you for that introduction. Um, it's truly a privilege for me to be here today. When you look out here and see all these people in the audience and the graduates and the faculty and what comes by, just, it's just humbling to me if you've been involved in higher education for many years like I was and particularly this campus. I think of this campus nearly every day of my life up till today, which is hard to believe. And hopefully as graduates, you gotta think that I graduated with my baccalaureate degree 60 years ago. <laughs> it's a long time ago. I don't remember the speech. I'm, I already know none of you are gonna remember this. You're worried about that first job and where you're headed from here. But it reminds me of uh, the time I heard a speaker say, you know, <clears throat> His grandson and his granddaughter jumped into his lap and said, Grandpa, tell me how it was when you were alive. And so here I am. I'm going to tell you how it was when I was alive. <laughs> well, Chancellor Mary mentioned the history of this place, and, and it really does have a very unique, this is a very unique campus when you think about it. It goes back to when James Hill was putting the railroad across this country, and he put the railroad tracks that you passed to get here, in 1895, so long ago I can't even remember that, think of that. But anyway, from there, of course, uh, he donated this land to the University of Minnesota that we're on right now. So that's how this place started. And of course, then they created what they called the six-month high school. It was hard for me to envision back then that they went six days a week and that basically six months a year. So that sounded like a pretty good deal, didn't it? But they were 13 to 17 years of age and they lived in the dorms. And you can imagine what happened. They had to have a lot of supervision. But anyway, uh, then a transition to the Technical Institute. That lasted, you know, that was 60 years. I'm gonna talk about cycles a little bit in your life that you're gonna go through. Well, then we were this Technical Institute. We, I came after about two or three years of that transition in, on this campus. That only lasted 25 years. And then from there, when I think about it, back then they started where they had home projects, then we, we had internships, and then of course when we made this transition in 1993, it all came about because of the notebook computers. I think now of, okay, that's, what's the next transition in higher ed? I can't even imagine what that's gonna be. That's up to the faculties of today, the administrators of today, as they think to the future. It will not be the way you experienced your education here today. It's nothing like the ex education that I experienced. Let's take a look at 1993. Most of you and probably weren't even born then when you think about that. So it's hard to envision what the world might be like. Let's start with cell phones. IBM came out with the first smartphone in 1993 using digital technology. Wireless technology was very limited back then. <clears throat> Thus, to have a commuter, you had to have a computer connection that was to a, tied to the land on the campus that you were involved in. 
Netscape was introduced by the University of Illinois. That was the first time you could send and receive an attachment in email. So that was kind of earthbreaking when you think about it. Also, notebook computers were getting more and more capacity. And so you, so you think about, the, about that. They've only cost about 2,500 bucks back then. Both the ability to send and receive an attachment in email and the growing capacity of the notebook computer was really what was important in its transition that happened here at UMC. Also during this era, there was a situation where two-year colleges were being created throughout the country. There had been 30 two-year colleges created here in Minnesota and probably 500 across the United States. Nils Hasimo, who was president of the University of Minnesota at that time, called myself as, and the chancellor of the two-year campus at Waseca with the University to his office on January 3rd, 1992, some days you remember in your life. He said he was going to recommend closing the Waseca and the Crookston campuses. There was no need for the University of Minnesota to offer two-year degrees. There were plenty available in the state of Minnesota and in the nation. He said you basically have about six to nine months to come up with a plan. Well, the Waseca Chancellor came up with a plan that primarily focused on agriculture degrees, and the regents rejected that the, the Waseca campus of the university was then given to the state of Minnesota and became a prison. Now that got my attention, I'll tell you. So what in the world could UMC do that would justify being a part of higher education in the University of Minnesota system? As part of my doctoral work at Pennsylvania State University, I had enrolled in several classes that had used technology. In fact, in 1970, when I came here from Penn State, and I was involved in teaching, I brought with me all the cards that we had to punch to put in to the community because they, they were simulations of a farm and simulations of an ag business, which is what I involved in in my, the PhD work. At that time, it's hard to believe, but UND did not have the computer capacity to run the, pro, the program that I brought from Penn State. So twice a week after what the students had run their simulations, I drove to Fargo to NDSU to run the computer simulations that had created in the class that I was teaching at that time. So I got to thinking about this, well, what, what could we do at UMC? I floated the idea about having you know, more technology used in classes. And they kind of thought that would be a good idea. But how could we go about documenting the need for such a college in higher education? Well, what happened then was basically the campus went about, we surveyed uh, college juniors, college seniors, we surveyed guidance counselors, um, we surveyed college graduates, but most importantly, we tried to stay in touch with the people of this region and we, served the, we surveyed the employers. And we kept asking them, what's lacking in the baccalaureate degree in 1992? And unanimously, the whole group said the thing was that college, students were graduating from college without the ability to use computers or to use technology. And they wanted that for the workforce because it was more about automate, automate, automate. So we'd found the opportunity to create a new and different kind of a college in higher education. Needless to say, a lot of times figuring out what you want to do is the easy part. Implementing is the hard part. And so then we moved into that phase. How in the world could we create a college where all students had notebook computers, they would have the same Microsoft suite of programs, so everybody was on an equal basis on campus, faculty and students, you could help one another. And so that was kind of the vision we had at that time to create such an environment in higher education. But since we wanted to transition from the two to the four year status for baccalaureate programs, we had to decide, well, okay, the, the, the other thing was clear about the president that I really loved was he said no additional money. <laughs> Nothing like having a bright idea and no money, you know. But anyway, but we, we had a thousand unanswered questions. We really did at that point in time. What courses should we drop? What courses should we add? What about accreditation with the Higher Learning Commission? What would happen to the athletic programs? Would faculty need additional degrees? But the campus came together and they answered all those questions and we were ready to take off in the fall of 1993. And the key element in the transition to the baccalaureate college was that all faculty and students were provided notebook computers. No college in the country or world had done that at that point in time. That's a lot of risk to take. So it's either gonna, you know, when you think about what was happening. So every student that fall was enrolled in what we called Introduction to Computers. We had over 30 sections. It was team taught by the faculty and I, 
I was even involved in a couple of the classes myself. We created the computer help desk that we have today, the tech, Faculty Technology Development Center, things like that that were really important. The other part of it was, remember I mentioned that wireless was not a technology that was readily available. So we had to take in the residential hall and in each room, if there were two students, we had to make sure we had an electrical connection and an internet connection with the port, to, in other words, to connect to the internet, which was really same in the classroom. Classrooms didn't have the connection, so we had to wire the seats in the classroom with an electrical connection and an internet port to make this work. And little by little, when we didn't know something, we went forward until we figured out what would work. And we, we made it to come into fruition. So UMC became the baccalaureate college with the focus on technology throughout the, cur the curriculum. In just five years from the time we implemented that, we had well over 200 co uh, colleges and universities from across this country and some of the world that came here to Crookston to see what the notebook computer environment was really like in higher education. And could they do it in their college? Well, a lot of them implemented parts of it. They would do it in a particular department or they'd do it in a particular uh, college, but they very few did it throughout the whole campus as we did as such. Of course, the end result was was phenomenal because when you think about today, 100% of you as graduates have taken an online course. Online courses really hadn't, weren't available when you think back at that point in time. And then of course it moved under Chancellor Casey's leadership and the faculty over the years to where we had back online degrees. And a lot of you are graduating today because you had the online degree available to you and you didn't have to come here to campus and, and make a change. So this was really kind of the forefront of higher education evolved here on the, on the Crookston campus. Well, that's the future, and I know you were pretty excited about the past, so we're gonna be being more excited about your future, because um, you didn't live in the past, you're gonna live in the future. What is it that's going to make a difference in your life? I can only share with you what's made a difference in my life, for good or bad. 60 years ago, when I received my baccalaureate degree from the University of Illinois, I was really pumped up. I was going to go into education, looking forward to my first teaching job in high school. As graduates today, you're beginning a 60-year journey. I know you don't think that way, but it's really the way it is. Your life expectancy is that you're going to live at least 60 more years. So you want to think about the changes that are going to occur, the opportunities out there, and how are you going to adjust to those as you go forward. Well, I always, what I think about is the big thing would be, for me, was that I have been fortunate to embrace change throughout my life. I'm also one that I wanted to be careful who I listen to. You can get so much advice you don't know what to do with it. And of course, then the other was you offer encouragement to others and they offer encouragement to you. And Chancellor Merritt mentioned that today. Of course, for me, it started with my family. I listen to, listen to your family, and I know you do. They know what's best. I was born in a farmhouse, not a hospital, out in Illinois. We had no indoor plumbing, and of course, to get water, we had a hand pump on the back porch. I was the oldest of four sons, so I knew immediately I wasn't gonna be on that farm. I'd have to probably go to college. And the good thing was that my father encouraged me to go to, to college, and then in high school, there were high school teachers, particularly the math teacher and the ag teacher that said, you know, Don, you should go to college. A lot of things you'd think about you, dream, you don't dream about things until they come at that time. So I thought, okay, I'll go. And I'm sure glad that I did. At that time, less than only about 20% of the pe of people that graduated from high school went to college. So it was different. Again, you're out taking some risks that other people didn't. The next big influence in my life was the lady that I married. The, the choices that you make in your life have a huge influence as you go forward. In my case, with um, and that's what happens when you, if you, you, first years, if you do get married, it changes the choices you'll have probably for jobs. It's going to change where you might live. It's going to change the activities you have. It'll change whether you're, what your finances are. It'll change whether you have children or not. So in other words, having a partner in life can make a big difference as you go forward. And that's probably, if you haven't already experienced it, one of the first ones that you're going to experience. For me, Mary Beth worked at Illinois State University. Her boss was the dean of the College of Technology. And he kind of was the second mentor in my life after my father. And he piqued my interest in computers. And he also said, you know, you should go on, you should get 
a doctorate degree. But if you can imagine from being born and raised on a farm with several kids, I just thought I'd done a great thing because I graduated with a baccalaureate degree. But he said, no, you really should think about going on for your education. So with his and Mary Beth's encouragement, I did go on and get a PhD. And that changed my life greatly. So I want you to think today about those who have encouraged you, whether it was in high school at UMC and they've offered you encouragement, and, and thank them as you go along the way. And today as graduates, you're gonna face with, be faced with a lot of different career choices and options. For me, I, was it should I enter education or think about a job in, in some kind of an ag corporation? There were jobs in banks, there was research institutes, there was uh, many different kinds of options. From now on, you're gonna have the same kinds of things. Your first job may only last one year, two years, five years. It's doubtful it'll last 10 years. You'll have, your role will change because you're gonna to wanna to grow and you're gonna to wanna to do some different things as you go forward in life. I know in my life, I had a simple one as you can tell. I had six, even in that case, I had six different uh, role changes or job changes in my lifetime. You'll have at least a dozen. So you, you want to be prepared, and this is the first step that you've taken today with this degree, and who are you going to listen to as you decide to make the next step in the, in the next few years? Find a mentor that can help you in evaluating your career opportunities throughout your whole life. In the early years, someone would say to me, you should go to work for a major ag company or be a, a banker or an ed sell insurance. You could make a lot more money than you will being in education. It was true, I could make more money, but even though making more money would be nice, for me, that wasn't my number one priority. I liked being in education. I liked, I'd have to say, the, I, I totally miss being involved in education to this year and working with people, the young people of today. So I want you to be careful when you're evaluating jobs. Don't think about it always from the money. Think about the job and what it is and what you really like. Every job will have distasteful tasks. I had to say this often to our sons. Just learn to how to do the distasteful task and move on, you know. Remember what it is that you like, not what you dislike. Even the best jobs have distasteful tasks, I can assure you of that, because I love the jobs I had, but there's things I hated doing. So be careful as you go forward and who you listen to. There are going to be tough times, and that's life. There's gonna be confusing times, and that's life. Because of UMC's transition to this baccalaureate college that we have today, and particularly because of the implementation of this notebook computer strategy, my life was changed forever. Because of that, I was asked as one example to attend the 100th anniversary for the National Agricultural University in Kiev in Ukraine. I remember being there and living in their dormitories I walked across the campus and saw bunkers in the ground on the university campus in Kiev, and I saw mortar holes in the buildings. So when I hear about the war in Ukraine, it, it really troubles me. Why do we continue to have wars? Another more joyful one was because of this notebook computer st strategy. Uh, one of the colleges in the capital of Brazil asked UMC to start a notebook computer strategy for them in Brasilia. And now when I watch the national news and I see them in the national capital smashing windows and doing things, and I go, w why does this have to happen? Why all this divisiveness in, in the world that we have today? Well, I don't know the answer. It just gets harder for me each year, even at my age, to determine who to listen to and what to believe because there's so much conflicting information. As you can see, and I've shared a bit about how um, the world has changed in my lifetime, I can't even begin to think about how it's going to change in your lifetime. So in the next three to five years, 10 years, 20 years, all the way up to 60 years from now, what's your life gonna be like? Education makes a difference. I think I'm a, an example of that. So maybe at some point, I'd encourage you to consider continuing your education for me, and it's easier today, you know, you, you can do it with online things, you can do it with conferences and workshops, but continue to seek opportunities to learn. I always tried to say to the students here, you know, the most important skill you learn is learn how to learn. And you can Google about anything today to figure it out, and it can make a difference, so 
So when you see changes occurring, try to figure out what's going on. Well, I would not be here today if I had not continued my education. And because of my education, I made much better life choices. So be careful who you listen to. Be generous in offering encouragement. Having just one person offer you encouragement sometimes changes your life, so do the same for others. Congratulations on your graduation today. Really be proud of your UMC degree. And my best to you in the years ahead. Don, thank you for your wise words today, and also thank you for your service to this campus. In a moment, I will present the candidates for graduation, and Dr. Danny Johannesson will introduce each of the candidates before they walk across the stage. A few words of direction first. Graduates, the student marshal will lead one row at a time to line up for coming across the stage. Please bring your name card and diploma holder with you. As you come up the ramp, please hand your name card to Dr. Johannesson for her to read it. As you walk across the stage, please pause at the X on the platform, which is just to my right, right here, and, and face the audience. We will get a professional photo of you holding your diploma next to the chancellor. These photos will then be available on our website for you to download a day or two after the ceremony. And now, for the moment we've all been waiting for, class of 2023, please rise. Chancellor Holtz Claus and Regent Hipsch, on behalf, of the on behalf of the faculty and staff of the University of Minnesota Crookston, I have the pleasure of presenting these candidates who have completed the requirements for a baccalaureate degree from the University of Minnesota through the Crookston campus. Student Marshall, please escort the first row of candidates to the stage. The rest of the candidates may be seated until the can uh, student marshal directs you to approach the stage. Nick Davies. Rimsey Sharma. Charlotte Marie Langanke. Emma Tolrud. Matthew Allman. Amara Sophia Biakwelli. Makoyo Bagaka. <laughs> Jeffrey Phillips. <laughs> Courtney Amerman. Joe Duke Mulba. Autumn Matson. Maddie Andring. Natalie Wilwording. Yeah. 
Graduating with high distinction, Haley Olson. Alyssa Sharp. Olivia Becker. Maddie Wildfewer. Dakota Chose. Shayola Natalia Birch. Lane Colton Coffee. Cameron White. Samantha Voigt. Ashley Kirkfleet. Ashley May. Sydney Ingle. Savannah Zimmerman Cameron. Graduating with high distinction, Carly Oberlin. Kaylee Silva. Maria Jose Bustos Garcia. Boyana Stakovich. Graduating with high distinction, Bren Fox. Graduating with high distinction, Brooke Benson. Graduating with high distinction, Alyssa Stillman. Graduating with high distinction, Gabby Bloomdahl. Haley Dabrowski. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Dana Zarn. <laughs> Alina Avalos. Graduating with high distinction, Cassie Happy. Sierra Kotaska. Alyssa Kasprick. Taylor Julia Pesh.
Zachary Benson. Sophia Linder. Shalane Kershevsky. Alana Irma Ortiz. Avery Jean Maddox. Stephanie Melby. Brianna Hinman. Graduating with distinction, Tasha Ackerman. Graduating with high distinction, Elena Knott. Britton Marina McGregor. Veronica Schwartz. Erica Cahi. Tierra Malakowski. Graduating with high distinction, Abigail Maunu. John Masanzi. Matt Moros. Brian David Beckala. Peyton Aaron Woggy. Tiffany Cosette. Graduating with distinction, Eric Klimek. Keegan Brian Poppenberg. Monica Mary Reichel. Evan Hebner. Charles Walsh. Jaden McCleary. Jackson Stephen Broughton. Peyton James Verbout. Molly Liebeck.
graduating with high distinction, Jordan David Stanley. Graduating with high distinction, Jose Martin Gonzalez, Jr. Graduating with high distinction, Nathan Kerr. Joseph Edward Reynolds. Alexander Joseph David. Graduating with distinction, Caitlin Marie Crook. Graduating with high distinction, Madison Lee Culler. Graduating with distinction, Abigail Blank. Graduating with distinction, Rebecca Oroyan Cowles. Graduating with distinction, Jack Malloy Eide. Catherine Nobles. Sava Yang. Joshua Myrie. Brett Hamry. Graduating with distinction, Hattie Overbow. Josiah Bullivant. Graduating with high distinction, Caitlin Fidoa. Kendra Putsky. Sydney Hedin. Kylie Westbrook. JC Tronis. Julia Steinkopf. <laughs> Graduating with high distinction, Koji Dara. Sierra Rookie. Graduating with high distinction, Jennifer Wire. Kayla Leibold.
Campbell. Michelle Sweeter. Callie Howe. Catherine Brainerd. Graduating with high distinction, Alyssa Pavlicic. Nick Grams. Ashley Choman. Delita Delita. Marcel Locust. Graduating with distinction, Lindsay Leilani Benson. Abigail Marie Leach. Graduating with high distinction, Madison Klimek. Graduating with distinction, Angelica Moreno Engelbrett. Morgan Grace LaPlante. Ariana Gambala. Zachary Allen Christian. Robert Ludovici. Bobby Joe Peterson. Patrick X. Lance Mathiason. <laughs> Josie Robison. <laughs> Lul Abdullahi. Graduating with distinction, Katie Orth. Graduating with distinction, Abigail Shalanka. Brielle Marie Crossman. Kelsey Landman. Graduating with high distinction.
Nation, Emily Dufault. Graduating with high distinction, Sid Bly. Jordan Gardner. Maddie Carlson. Alexis Peterson. Graduating with distinction, Elena Marion. Kylie Jo Wallenkamp. Peyton Hennen. Grace Myers. Rachel Maney. Rebecca Clark. Maria Olson. Dua Ahmed. Naima Mohamud Haji. Mackenzie Berg Johnson. Lauren Daffenbaugh. Danielle Raddick. Tiffany Foster. Christine Michelle Hay. Graduating with distinction, Waylon Davis. Alexa Norvell. Brady Madsen. Taylor Marie Larson. Rebecca Tweeten. Justin Bueller Horde. Brian Johnson.
Regent Hipsch, having presented you with the University of Minnesota Crookston Class of 2023, I invite you to the podium to confer their degrees from the University of Minnesota. <clears throat> Will the candidates for degrees please rise as you are able. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority of the Board of Regents, I now confer upon you the degrees for which you have qualified. The graduates may now move their tassels to the left side of their mortar boards. Uh, congratulations again. You may now be seated. Thank you, Regent Hipsch. Let me be the first to congratulate you all and introduce you as the alumni class of 2023. I encourage you to sit back and reflect in a few moments about this momentous time in your life as we listen to the song, If We Can Hold On Together, by the University of Minnesota Crookston Graduation Choir. After the song, Crookston Alumni Association President Alicia Aslam will come to the podium to share some remarks to you, our newest alumni. Vocal Ensemble, please take it away.
Regent Hibbish, Chancellor Emeritus Donald Sargent, Chancellor Emeritus Charles H. Casey, Chancellor Holes Claus, Interim Vice Chancellor Kern, Honored Platform Guests, Faculty, Staff, Students, Alumni, Emotional Family Members, Friends, and Members of the Graduating Class of 2023. It is my pleasure to be addressing you today on behalf of the University of Minnesota Crookston Alumni Association, and I bring warm wishes of congratulations from the board. As I prepared my remarks for today, I read through my speech that I, reflect, that I gave as CSA president on my day of graduation a little over 10 years ago. And surprisingly, some of the elements are still relevant today. It reminded me of my fond, fond memories at UMC, and I was reminded of numerous commencement committees that I attended leading up to graduation day. Usually at the beginning of the meeting, Dr. Casey, he was the chancellor at the time, would always ask me the date of graduation or how many days until graduation. I would reply with May 5th and sometimes the number of days with a huge smile on my face. He would always smile back at me and laugh because he knew, like you, I was excited to see what the future held for, to me, held for me. I thought that memory fitting seeing as he is here with us today. Throughout your time at UMC, you have developed your own memories with your friends and professors these past years that will last you a lifetime. In our world today, change seems to be a constant in our lives and is an activator that has guided your experience at UMC. Unknowingly built you to the person that you are today. Change, com change comes whether we want it to or not, and oftentimes, when we don't want it, that's when we need it most. Certainly today is a, is a full day of welcome change. As you go off into the world to new and exciting jobs, graduate schools, or other endeavors, there is one thing that I can be certain of that will not change. You are now forever a part of the UMC alumni family. We want to stay connected with you and know what's going on in your life. Feel free to always stop in on campus, attend homecoming events, and most importantly, tell your story about why you attended UMC. Who knows, maybe you could inspire someone to follow in your footsteps. I'm going to leave you today with the same challenge that I gave the class of 20, 2012. Leave this campus and put your mark on wherever it is that you go, and make sure that everyone you meet remembers who you are. And don't forget to design a life that you love, because we're all entitled to a beautiful life. Make sure you always keep us up to date on your exciting adventures because our legacy lives on in you, our alumni. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you, Alicia, for your greetings and your sage advice to our new class of 2023. It is now my pleasure to ask our Crookston Student Association President, Madison Elijah, to the podium to share some remarks. Congratulations, University of Minnesota Crookston graduates. I am honored to be standing here today as your Crookston Student Association President. Each of you have had your own unique experiences here, a combination of good times and bad times, times of laughter and times of joy, times of school spirit, and of course, times of last minute studying for those exams that you all forgot about. Graduation marks the end of yet another extraordinary chapter in your lives. With this chapter closing, I am certain that many of you are anxious about the starting of your next chapter. Luckily, as the University of Minnesota student grad, University of Minnesota Crookston graduates, you have been given all of the tools and support from your family, friends, faculty, and staff in order to make this next chapter everything that you want. With this chapter of your lives coming to a close, I hope that Crookston was truly a home away from home for all of you, and that you made memories, friendships, and experiences that you will cherish forever. Crookston is always a home for you, and you will always be a golden eagle. Thank you. All right. A tradition unique to the University of Minnesota Crookston is the presence of the academic torch at special ceremonies. This tradition goes back to the 1960 goes back to 1968 in the first graduating class of the University of Minnesota Technical Institute at Crookston. This torch is a symbol of the shared governance between administration and students. The symbolic light of the torch represents the illuminating qualities of education as well as the educational philosophy of the University of Minnesota. Typically, the outgoing student body president passes the torch to the new incoming president. Well, since I am returning to be the president again next year, it makes this experience a little bit different. But in keeping with tradition, on behalf of the Crookston Student Association, I accept this torch to lead the student body into the 2023-2024 academic year. 
I would like to thank those graduating who have held roles in CSA during their time here on campus for their leadership. I will do my very best to carry on a tradition of excellence, and I extend my congratulations to the class of 2023. Thank you. Thank you, Madison. Thank you for this past year of service and your leadership going forward. We're so appreciative of all that you do. So it's been a wonderful day. Hasn't it been fun? And I want to offer our sincere thanks to everyone who's been involved with planning today's event, especially the, member of the members of the commencement committee whose names are in the digital program, media services, and our facilities and operations staff. We know events like this don't just happen. It takes the work of so many to make things flow seamlessly. So please join me in thanking them. Once again, thank you to our faculty, staff, students, alumni, families and friends, as well as the members of the community of Crookston. We're all part of the University of Minnesota Crookston family. And thanks to each of you today for coming to celebrate our class of 2023. I wanna offer a few words of advice for our newest alumni. You know, commencement is a day of many, many emotions. And I'm sure you're probably a little relieved that you survived the finals final week. Nobody tripped when they walked across the hair. And you're probably looking and saying, you know, this time has gone so quickly. So I'm sure you have a lot of happiness and excitement as you're thinking about moving on to your next adventure. Sadness, which I shared with a few of you as you went by here, because you're heading in a different direction. We may not see each other for a while but it's going to be a great direction that you're all headed. And perhaps you're all just a tad bit anxious about some of those uncertainties as you head off into those new adventures. Well, I can assure you, graduates, our University of Minnesota Crookston faculty and staff, myself included, share a lot of those same emotions with you, but one that we don't share is we're not anxious about your future at all because we know it's going to be great and you're already on a wonderful pathway. Because you know what? Today you earned your bachelor's degree from the University of Minnesota. So remain focused on your goals, continue to discover, continue to be curious, lead in your space and explore your passions. Enjoy every step along your journey. Be well. Continue to do good things because I know you will. And please stay connected through your alumni association. My phone has been uh, vibrating with people that are sending me LinkedIn requests to continue to be connected. So if you haven't done that yet, please do so. And let's stay connected. Let's stay because you are part of the University of Minnesota Crookston family. We welcome you back anytime that you're here. And please help us too to help recruit the next generation of our Golden Eagles. So the campus has been a home to you and wherever you go, the University of Minnesota Crookston goes with you. Visit us and please know you are always welcome to come home here and be with us. So once again, congratulations and best wishes. So now, please join us in singing the Minnesota Rouser, led by our student choir one more time. After the song, we'll begin the recessional. Faculty and staff, once you leave, please make a receiving line, as you do every year on the mall, to congratulate our graduates. Audience, please remain in your seats until all the graduates have left, and then please join us in the mall for pictures, good wishes, hugs. We will We'll stay until all of those pictures are taken and best wishes have been exchanged. So now everyone, please rise as you're able and join us in singing the Minnesota Rouser. The words are in your program.
graduating with high distinction. Christine Alpers. Corey Baker. Brooke Benson. Gabby Bloomdahl. Sid Bly. Anne Marie Boyum. Allison Rose Brezina. Janice Eileen Carney. Zoe Elizabeth Christensen. TJ Clark. Isabel Cornelisi. Alex Crittenden. Madison Lee Culler. Shelby D. Jarnett. Kojilembe Machina Dara. Emily Dufault. Allie Eblen. Kelly Lee Evangelist. Lori Ann Cooper Everett. Ann Ferroni. Lindsay Ferroni. Caitlin Fidua. Bren Fox. Jose Martin Gonzalez. Cassie Happy. Claire Johnson. John Andrew Jonas. Desiree Jordan. Angela Karjala. Nathan Kerr. Lauren D. Klein. Maddie Klimek. Elena Knott. Anna Rose Kochevar. Alex Kep. Shelby Ann Krebs. Abigail Maunu. Katie McCabe Schaller. Catherine Marie McLaughlin. Sarah Meredith. Luke William Meyer. Virginia Mazatesta. Liz Murphy. Mike Nelson. Kelly Nelson. Carly Oberlin. Haley Olson. Alyssa Pavlacic. Kylie Post. Jamie Provost. Umberto Esteban Rodriguez Gallegos. Peyton Rude. Emily Schneider. Andrea Sochow. Kim Schultz. CJ Sobolewski. Jordan David Stanley. Joanna Stellis. Alyssa Stillman. Brianne Thick. Matthew Thielen. Sarah Thompson. Shannon Jacqueline Urban. Pau Vu. Jennifer Weyer. Graduating with distinction. Tasha Ackerman. Leanna Anderson Speaker. Faith Inez Robinson. Lindsay Leilani Benson. Abigail Blank. Trace Brayton. Mary Burke. Rebecca Cowles. Caitlin Marie Crook. Waylon Davis. Jack Malloy Eide. Chase Stephen Freilig. Megan Gomez. 
Ashley Gunderson, Jordan Haugen, Erica Karen, Anastasia Kirsten, Elise Klepetka, Eric Klimek, Anna Christine Kolker, Liliana Rose LaFontaine, Christine Marie Lucci, Michael Francis Manganello, Elena Marion, Timothy Craig McLaughlin, Camden Miller, Allison Moreland, Angelica Moreno Engelbrett, Madeline Murphy, Katie Orth, Hattie Overbow, Matthew Thomas Peterson, Kylie Praska, Sean Reinholdt, Tristan Robbins, Rena Sakai, Paige Sanis, Abigail Shalonka, Caden Seto, Theo Stonemeyer, Kayla Marie Winiompa, Thomas Joseph Wortman, Si Young Yoon, Dana Zarn. Luke Anstead, Lul Abdullahi, Ethan Akhtar, Abdirahman Ali, Dual Ali, Matthew Allman, Courtney Amerman, Brooke Amber Anderson, Isaac Anderson, Liv Esther Anderson, Maddie Andring, Lindsay Arnold, Alina Avalos, Rambo Badyal, Makoyo Bagaka, Cassidy Hennen Bartlett, Olivia Becker, Brian David Beckala, Zachary Benson, Mackenzie Berg Johnson, Rachel Bissett, Heather Bowling, Jackson Stephen Broughton, Catherine Brainerd, Cassandra Bros, Nick Brusowitz, Joby Buchholz, Josiah Boulevant, Shayola Natalia Birch, John Burnett, Morgan Burrell, Christopher Bushi. Maria Bustos, Amara Sofia Biakwele, Brian Cameron, Jack Camrude, Maddie Carlson, Angela Kaysen, Erica Coy, Sarah Chapman, Hyunwook Cho, Ashley Choman, Zachary Allen Christian, Ma Sisi, Rebecca Clark, Lane Colton Coffee, Timothy Patrick Coffee, Sarah Connolly, 
Maya Conway, Christine Cook, Alessandro Croco, Haley Dabrowski, Atesh Dat, Lauren Doenbaugh, Alexander Joseph David, Nick Davies, Neva Diolarte, Delita Delita, Khadija Diop, Chesney Dubias, Jake Dykoff, Kaylee Eigenberg, Sydney Engel, Matthew Scott Erickson, Harrison Ernstmeyer, Taylor Lachey Ewer, Shannon Fabick, Michael Fowler, Eddie Figueroa, Kevin Finkbeiner, Emma Elizabeth Finken, Connor Fonger, Brianna Janae Foss Dahl, Tiffany Foster, Rhonda Furlong, Ariana Gambala, Jordan Gardner, Andreas K. Gaston, Frank Carl Gilbertson, Benjamin B. Gels, Mandy Gordon, Nick Grams, Joey Greco, Jacob Whedon Griebel, Kelsey K. Grunewald, Katie Hesley, Becca Haish, Naima Mohamud Haji, Hunter Hale, Shelton George Hall, Catherine Halos, Helver Halverson, Luther Halverson, Brett Hamry, Benjamin Hansen, Joseph Harris, Zeke Garrett Hass, Justin Michael Hayworth, Christine Michelle Hay, Sydney Hedden, Courtney Hendricks, Peyton Hennen, Heather Herbaugh Aberesk, Brianna Hinman, Justin Horde, Emma Holt, Matt Holtberg, Derek Hook, Andrew Hoskins, Callie Howe, Evan Hubner, Brett Hulleberger, Bianca Jaquette, Becky Janegis, Brian Johnson, Zachary Johnson, Cameron Lynn Jokey, Nolan Julson, Casey Callick, Alyssa Kasprick, Ashley Kirkfleet, Now Kim, Amanda Joy Kingsley, Dakota Jose, Tanya Klinkner, Natalie Koch, Shalane Kostreski, Sierra Kotaska, Tiffany Kozajed, 
Brielle Crossman, Kelsey Landman, Charlotte Marie Langanke, Adam Lang, Morgan LaPlante, Taylor Marie Larson, Scarlett Lauston, Abigail Marie Leach, Chi Lee, Choa Lee, Kayla Libel, Ryan Rachel J. Lemon, Jordan Lewis, Kathy Lidberg, Sophia Linder, Marcel Locust, Samuel Lofquist, Jackie Lowe, Devin Loyo, Robert Ludovici, Anthony Lupa, Samuel Lai, Molly Liebeck, Avery Jean Maddox, Brady Madsen, Mohammed Mahmoud, Tierra Malakowski, Brennan Malone, Sarah Marcus, John Mazanzi, Haley Massman, Lance Mathiason, Nelson Matthew, Anthony Mathies, Autumn Matson, Ashley May, Jaden McCleary, Cal McDonough, Britton Marina McGregor, Nathan McRoberts, Rachel Meany, Stephanie Dawn Melby, Grace Myers, Ryan Matthew Miller, Amal Mohammed, Shuaib Mohammed, Ellie Morlin, Matt Moros, Rachel Grace Mosca, Mark Andrew Moscatelli, Isra Muhadin, Joe Duke Mulba, Stephen Murray, Joshua Meyer, Gabby Nankin, Rosalie Narvison, Courtney Nash, Dan Nelson, Mishka Noble, Alice Nobles, Bethany Nolt, Tom Norman, Alexa Norval, Vanessa Nyberg Gallier, Beatricia Okiere Botang, Jessica Olson, Maria Olson, Mason Olson, Nick Olson, Alana Irma Ortiz, Zara Pagiri Naloi, Gunnar Garth Parr, Alyssa Patil, Angelica Nicole Peterson, Bobby Joe Peterson, Cade Peterson, Heather Perez, Connor Perry, Taylor Julia Pesh, Alexis Peterson, Jeff Phillips, K. 
Kathy Pirjana. Noel Pink. Elena Popova. Jace Papowski. Keegan Brian Poppenberg. Mike Powell. Kendra Putsky. Danielle Lee Raddick. Anna Rankin. Monica Reichel. Joseph Edward Reynolds. Connor Richardson. Jeremy Richardson. Jason Roach. Josephine Robison. Sierra Jean Ryuki. Samantha Sanchez. Luis Santianez. Primo Bowe Sawari. James Leroy Schneibel. Jackson Schneider. Mark Schoning. Veronica Schwartz. Rimsey Sharma. Alyssa Sharp. Brianna Shaw. Chloe Melinda Shaw. Greg Sherman. Grant David Sherwin. Joseph Shilkrot. Tyrese Shines. Sarah Shogren. Thomas Shope. Kaylee Silva. Megan Sorum. Matt Spencer. Julia Steinkopf. Boyana Stakovich. Abby Stender. Abby Stevens. Mackenzie Swank. Michelle Swider. Teresa Tho. Marcus A. Thompson. Katie Timmers. Lemuel Tirado Flecha. Emma Tolrud. J.C. Tronis. Mallory Euchre. Emma Vaughn. Peyton James Verbout. Megan Elaine Very. Christopher Viglietta. Sam K. Voigt. Peyton Aaron Wage. Kylie Joe Wallenkamp. Charlie Walsh. Shelby Wanless. Reeve Wormus. Kylie Westbrook. Corey Weston. Cameron White. Emily Whitman. Jacob R. Weary. Maddie Wildfuer. Natalie Wilwarding. Tara Worth. Ashton Wald. Marinda Watashik. Yicheng Chi. Xu Xiang. Chufu Yang. Sawa Yang. Savea Zimmerman Cameron.